Hello, I'm at the Oranmore Rehearsal Rooms with Daniel Jackson, who is the writer of next week's play, The Trouble with Double. Tell us about it, Daniel. Okay. Um, it's a romp. It's uh, a sort of effervescent souffle of uh, confusion and hijinks. Ah. And I think maybe the starting point was Kenny Miller, who is directing it, and I. So we we sort of wanted to do like a kind of slightly tongue in cheek version of those kind of uh, screwball comedies from like the forties, forties, fifties. Um, but as it, as with everything, I try and sort of replicate something else. Inevitably, it never looks quite like the thing I'm trying to replicate, and so it's kind of got a bit of that, and maybe also like a bit of. Forbes Masson's Pantos from the Tron, mm -hmm. and maybe like a little bit of uh, sort of sub PG Woodhouse and stuff. PG um, Woodhouse? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, oh, I wish I hadn't said that now because it's a bit like comparing yourself ah. to uh, people who are much better than you, but yeah, I mean, I'm a massive PG Woodhouse fan. Me too. Oh! Yeah. Yeah, and um, what was it that threw this particular souffle in the oven? Um, I think, well, it, it, it's sort of in some ways a companion piece to one Kenny and I did two years ago or more that I think it was called Company Policy. And I, I think I would say it's the most fun I've ever had with any project ever and it's the thing I was most proud of at the end. And so we sort of wanted to, wanted to do another together uh, and so that's kind of where the, where the idea sprang from. Great. Um, you have been extremely busy. Uh, you've been a very hard man to get a hold of. You've been so busy. <laughs> you did deliver, it. you said you deliver. It. You yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've been in America? No, no, no not that recently. Well, I was in America last year. Yes, what were you doing there? Uh, I was there seeing a production of one of my plays, My Romantic History, which was on in Philadelphia, which ah. was very exciting. Oh, lovely. And in fact, that play has not the same production, but a different production. That play has just closed in Japan. Ah. And I just got, uh, I got a, um, I got a program through the post today for the ah, Japanese exactly. production. Uh, and more recently? Uh, more recently, I've been writing about television. And that's mainly what I've been occupying myself with. Oh, I had a show at the festival as well. I almost forgot. Yeah, I had a show at the festival. Um, but mainly, the last year has been pretty much doing TV stuff. What, what, what are you doing on telly? Uh, I was writing on the third series of a show called Fresh Meat, which is on Channel 4, um, which was you know, a tremendous experience. And I learned an awful lot. It's written by uh, some of the other writers, other like people who write Peep Show and The Thick of It and those kind of things. So it was like, you know, really, it was quite an experience. Like you, you'd be in the writing room uh, and go home with your, your you, know that, you know that film when your face aches from laughter, like when you've been watching Billy Connolly or something, uh -huh. and it was like that every day. And I was being paid to be there, and it was amazing. So now you're mixing theatre and television? Yeah, well, trying to. And That's tell us about the difference. Uh, God, I mean, from a, te like from a technical point of view, in some ways writing TV is so much easier than writing theatre, um, because in a way that, you know, in the theatre, everything, everything you write sort of has to be achievable in a theatre. Um, I mean that sounds like a really obvious thing, but I think that, like that that's the principal difference. Whereas with TV, you know, if you want to cut away to you know someone someone five hundred miles away, you can do that, and, yeah. and also you can sort of deal with time in a, in a different way. It's a lot. I think it's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot less sort of technical restrictions. You can come into like a scene that. halfway through and leave it. E exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, and so in some ways, yes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, but then also. Whenever the inevitability of writing TV because there is so much more money involved and there are so many more voices that need to be heard. And so even though you have that kind of freedom also, um, along with that, you, you sort of uh, have a lot more restrictions than mm -hmm. you would have in the theatre. And I think that's the thing that... Oh, I mean, there's loads of things I love about theatre, but I mean, that, that's like a, a major selling point of working in the theatre as opposed to working in television is that idea of, of you know, sort of... You essentially being the final say in, in whether something stays or goes with the script. Uh -huh. Whereas, you know, you, <laughs> you're very low down in the decision making tree in television. Ian Patterson said an interesting thing to me the other week. 
um, about the difference in theatre and telly. He said, of course, in telly you get loads of money and no rehearsal time. And in theatre you get no money but loads of rehearsal time. Yeah, well, sure. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and also, I mean, the, 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 the other thing I think, I've, I've written, I mean, I've not written much for TV, but I've written sort of for River City and things before, and so I've had stuff on. And even though, I mean, say, for example, an episode of River City I've been like, you know, what, like a thousand times more people will have seen that than see a play, but, you know, you don't actually get any, any feedback in, in the way that, you know, when you have a play on, you can be there and, and, and you pretty immediately know what has been fun. successful or not successful, yeah, but with TV it's a bit more like, you know, putting a message in a bottle and yeah. throwing it out to see. So what's the next? What's in the pipeline? Um, well, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm going to continue doing TV stuff, and so I've got a few things and working on for TV, but next theatre thing, I'm writing a play for the Lyceum in Edinburgh, which I hope to finish this year, so... You had a very successful play there. Ah, uh, the version of Magic Figaro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was, it was pretty, that was, it was quite an experience. I mean, so what, what's the new one? Uh, I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should say what it's about. It's, it's a bit of a departure for me. I would say, if I'm probably mostly known for writing light comedies, this is not a light comedy. So, right. Yeah. So we will see, but it's, it's... This is the dark side of Daniel Jackson. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly, it's certainly a bit different. It's, yeah. Well, come along next week and see the light side of Daniel <laughs> Part of the lightest side. It's, it's uh, in his words, it's a souffle. So when it's been taken out of the oven, don't delay, come quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Thank you, David.